With the peak of COVID-19 in the United States, there's been an emphasis on family dinners and people have been spending a lot of time in close quarters, putting family relationships to the test. We all have expectations. We might explicitly share them with others or keep them to ourselves in hopes that maybe some people have a clue. Little do we know, but by setting those kinds of expectations from people around us, we're really setting the table for a surprise guest. Hi, thank you for joining us on Path and Posture. I'm Mariah Turner, and I'm joined with two co-hosts tonight. You could say Brittany Turner and Sierra Turner. Thank you, ladies, for joining me. Hello. Hello. So exciting news. In the middle of all this quarantine, Sierra has moved to Dallas. Woo! Yay! <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So we have another well, permanent, permanent guest. Yes. Permanent ho- co-host. Permanent co-host, yes. Sorry. I, I demoted <laughs> you that quickly. <laughs> Can you tell she's my little sister? Uh, so, yes, yeah, Sierra, talk to us about what it felt like to finally move. Unfortunately, Andrew is still behind um, at our last military post. So until he joins us, it still feels like I have to go back home. But uh, it's nice knowing that I'm here to stay and that we have new beginnings ahead of us and yeah, I'm just really excited to see what God has in store for us here. Yeah, you're kind of living in two places right now because your husband's in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. And then That's common here. for a military life, though. Yes, it's definitely nothing new to, <laughs> to us. And Oklahoma's a lot closer than overseas. Yes, um, it could have been even Alaska, so we're very happy. That's great. Awesome. So Brittany and Brendan have been here with mom and dad longer than Austin and I have. Austin and I moved to Dallas in 2018. And we've spent... We were 2016. You guys came in 2016. And now Sierra and Andrew here are in 2020. 2020. Those even years, man. And as we've kind of come back together, we've seen our family dynamics change. Right. Both as individual families and the collective family, just because we're learning how to do family with all these people now. Mm -hmm. It was different when it was just the five of us growing up. (laughs) And mom and dad had total authority, which they still do. But now it's getting together with their children who are adults. Yeah. And they're adults with spouses and they have their own children. And there's just so many different dynamics now. And there's personalities. Personalities. And there's different dynamics between your family and my family. Right. And so when we moved here. And my family. And now (laughs) Sierra's family. (laughs) When we moved here, that was a question on our mind was, how are we going to make this all work? Because we've kind of, you know, gelled together and our way to make, you know, life wonderful in Ohio and to figure life out in Minnesota. And then we're like, okay, now you got to figure it out in Texas. But there's the added benefit and bonus of figuring it out with the people you love around you. You Just got to make sure that there's that piece that stays there because they're trying to figure things out too, you know. So... Now that Sierra's in the picture, we have another factor. Mm -hmm. And even more so in this time of her moving here, not only is she a factor, but everything is put under so much pressure because of the whole coronavirus that's out there right now. So we've, we've been spending time together as an individual family, Austin and I and the kids, but our quarantine circle has been pretty big. It's involved, you know, your family and even mom and dad. Yeah. Because we, I mean, we're we're close. Well, yeah, we're, we all live, you know, relatively close to each other down no, the street, within a know? few miles, and we've been helping each other. Like shop. I've had doctor appointments that you've had to watch my kids for. Yeah. You've had dentist appointments that I've had to watch your kids for. Yeah. And there's no way to get around that. No. And I feel like that's the safest thing to do is to leave your children with family, and so instead of bringing in a nanny or a sitter, that's just you, you can't right nowadays. So, like I said, our quarantine circle is pretty big. And now it's even bigger because Sierra is involved with Calvin. And so we're talking about how we have this pressure put on us because we're in close proximities with our family because of Corona. And things that kind of start to come to light are those expectations Mm -hmm. that you might have hidden in your heart or in your mind. And then you just feel like, oh, I thought they would have figured this out by now. Things start to come to light is what I'm trying to say. Right. And the thing is we had um, been with one another for Easter. 
right? Mm -hmm. So that was kind of the start of everything. And what was coming to full circle was our prayers for Sierra to be here. We had been praying for years for our family unit to be Mm -hmm. together, all together again. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know what that looked like, but we were praying to God that he would bring it. And so we had all these expectations when she's coming. Finally, today's the day that she's moving to Dallas. We're going to have an Easter dinner together in the midst of this coronavirus and and it's going to be great you know we're going to be close and and safe and 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 so we set the table for these certain the certain kind of yes joyous events yes this joyous event event resurrection jesus he is here and sierra was preparing her heart and her mind the whole way down driving down from oklahoma i had a smile on my face the whole ride <laughs> <laughs> so i feel like we're kind of highlighting in this podcast, this episode, our experience of what guaranteed several families are going through right now. Mm -hmm. Just having to sit with the same people every single night at family Mm -hmm. dinner and be with the same people every single day during quarantine. Things just start to come to light. Mm -hmm. And so when Sierra came on Easter, Mm -hmm. We were all very excited and Calvin was there and we all had this expectation. You, you, this was like the first time because you just moved into your new house, Brittany. Right. And so this is the first hosting dinner that you had event. Yeah. You know, it's like, I wanted to say event, but I'm like, no, it's an event. Brittany, it's a dinner. It's an event. She puts it on. (laughs) Whenever there's the children, everything's an event. (laughs) Yes. So it's the first big event in Brittany's brand new house. And she's like so excited. Sierra shows up and she's so excited. I gave her an avocado. No yes, bad. you did. <laughs> it's an avocado. It's one of her favorite like little viral Thanks. videos. And it was this avocado notepad that I saw while I was shopping for groceries. And it was just sitting there all lonely. And I, I purchased it. I was like, oh, Sierra should continue her creative outlet w- using this notepad with her new life in Texas. Mm-hmm. And so she came and then the baby came and I got him like this Easter egg. But I, I went straight to the dinner after, you know, a two and a half hour drive. Yeah. Across state lines. Yeah. And um, after taking care of a baby all day, you know, and and in addition to that. So can you see what we're foreshadowing to? We're foreshadowing. Yeah. <laughs> this it's, happy it's Easter dinner. And let's go back here. So I had set the table here yes. with like this, this hymn along my runner, be thou my vision. Mm-hmm. And cause you know, we're in 2020 and it's supposed to be 2020 vision. Right. And so be thou my That's vision. Great. And I had stained it with black tea and I was like, I put some Easter sprinkles on it. I it was said, beautiful. This is going to be perfect. It was beautiful. So... <laughs> What happened was, <laughs> no, before I, before we get into kind of what unraveled while we were at Easter dinner with the Turner family, I do want to bring in some scripture and what came to my mind was the first chapter of James verses 26. It goes on to, into 27. Uh, it's kind of part of it too, but 26, more of a highlight. It says, if you put yourself on a pedestal thinking you've become a role model in all things religious but you can't control your mouth, then think again. Your mouth expresses your heart and your religion is useless. So I was thinking about this because really with sisters, daughters, women in general, if things go awry, it's because of our mouths. (laughs) Something's happening (laughs) with our mouths. And you just heard it straight from the word of God. That's exposing our hearts, Mm -hmm. really. So in my kind of, parallel here. If you walk into your family dinner thinking, hey, whatever happens, I did nothing wrong. And you think you're the role model of all things peaceful and loving, and you're the king or the queen of kindness, but then you open your mouth and you cause strife with statements, your heart's been exposed. Brittany and Sierra and I, mom, dad, and our husband, we're all together. And I don't even know how things started to go awry. (laughs) Let me think. (laughs) I think the the problem was, is that, um, Many different personality types are coping with COVID. And for Brittany's sake, uh, she's going insane. <laughs> I am. She because is, I'm an extrovert. She is an extrovert. She wants to love on people. And um, I think that that restlessness is inside of everybody right now. And so, you know, through the conversations that were happening, you know, her restlessness was combining with my restlessness in a conversation. And I think ultimately the problem was that Brittany was trying to share something that was on her heart and 
to me, I was trying to counter that with something that's on my heart, but the way that we both did it, it definitely did not meet the expectations we had of what the other should be, of how the other should be responding to what is on our hearts. You know, where Brittany wanted me to respond in understanding understanding this. and support, I, I responded more so with caution and uh, questions. And to her, that did not meet her expectation. And, and her response did not meet my expectation of care and caution, you know, came across as unsupportive and limiting, you know, to her her heart. And in Brittany's response, it came across as defensive and maybe even belittling. And so that, you know, failed my expectations of, of having a successful conversation in general. And so we're talking about expectations in this episode pertaining to when we set expectations of people around us, we're really setting the table at these family dinners for a surprise guest. Yes. Being strife. Yes, being absolutely. Being just pure evil. The mm-hmm. enemy himself. Yep. Ripping apart your family gathering. Sneaking through. Yep. Seeking to devour. And Sierra had a good point. Actually, it was interesting. I think, it, I don't even know when she mentioned it, but she had watched The Passion. The night before. Right. And so I'm just to jump in here. You know, as we have already said, there was some tension at our family Easter dinner and... You know, I wasn't really happy with the way things ended that night, and I understood that I needed to make some apologies because the night beforehand, my husband Andrew and I had watched The Passion of Christ, and the way that they depict Satan in that film really brought me to a pause because I realized by seeing him personified it's very creepy. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, anybody's <laughs> seen that movie? Yes. It's very creepy. And you realize, you know, if I were to depict Satan in that way, how am I letting him get so close to me in the way that he whispers in your ear and tells you lies mm-hmm. and, and the lies that you then portray on other people and cause those tentious moments of strife. And so, realizing that I had let Satan get so close to me in that situation where I would cause, you know, contention between my sisters and and maybe approach things without patience and without understanding, that really, you know, convicted me. And I realized that I was letting an unwanted guest very close to me, uh, not only in my home, but in my ear as well. You left the door open on Easter. <laughs> I came swinging in and I was yeah. like, come on, world. No. No, and, and it was, and you know, it's not just something that happens on Easter. Like when Sierra was talking to us that later that night, because we never leave anything unresolved in our family. It was one of those things where I realized, you know, I know that we, it's not just Easter dinner where that happens. It happens frequently in our family. Mm-hmm. And we choose actively to be transparent and hold one another accountable for the truths that we say we believe in our lives. And we fight for one another. We fight with one another, but we fight for one another more. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, just to add to that, when you have a house full of siblings, you know, there's going to be problems. There's going to be conflicts. We're all individual people and we have our individual faults. Even more so as sisters, if anybody has seen Little Women, Brittany is Joe. I am Amy. Amy burned (laughs) Joe's book. I did not do that. (laughs) But we have many of the same kind of... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, bad. bad. (laughs) Many same interactions. Very passionate women. You know, and where that can be a blessing, it can also get us in trouble. Yes, absolutely. So we're being open. We're being honest about how... Corona has affected us as a family. How as sisters being close together in quarantine has affected us as a family. And we know that we're all on the same path right now. And so we had some poor posture. Mm-hmm. We're owning up to it. Yeah. And we just want to shed some light on it in hopes that we can spare you from that same posture. And I just want to say, like, Sierra, you... You apologized that night, but I also needed to apologize that night. And so there was this correspondence between all of us where we were like, yeah, you know, we're, we're all sorry. And your apology was so well written and, and on our little sister group with mom. For us to get there, 
calm down and then and for us to get to that point is so important really truly the grace of god and and just be humbling ourselves and just realizing how much we need the grace of god mm-hmm. to be on easter right mm-hmm. on the reason why we are risen is because he is risen mm-hmm. and the reason why we can rise again mm-hmm. through this mm-hmm. is because solely of jesus and on my way over here, when I was in the car driving to Mariah's house for this podcast, I felt as though there was this perfect timing of the song I heard on the radio called Breakthrough by Red Rock Worship. And I was listening to the lyrics and I realized while we are all waiting for a breakthrough with this COVID-19 crisis, we're waiting for a healing We're waiting for a cure, for a vaccine, for anything to help resolve this global issue. The lyrics of the song didn't quite translate to me as a breakthrough in a situation, but a breakthrough of my soul and a breakthrough of individual personalities and sinful natures. And I just had this visual of God knocking down this wall and that wall was a breakthrough of my sinful nature. And it was a beautiful song that I felt was very well-timed. And so while we're all waiting for a breakthrough in this situation and, and dealing with our families at home, you know, we're waiting for God to change the world, but maybe he's taking this time to change us as individuals. Mm-hmm. And we've mentioned that a couple of times just how God can be with us while we're lonely. And that's ultimately how, where the most progress happens is when he's got us one-on-one. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You can't, you can't run. There's, you can't, no, there's, there's no, no way nowhere to distract to run. yourself. Yeah. You can no. run to your local park, then you have to go home. <laughs> <laughs> so my question for all of our listeners would be, what is this exposing in you? What is this trial through Corona through COVID-19 with your family, exposing in your family, and how have you seen expectations that maybe weren't realized, and how have you seen there maybe needs to be some more grace in other areas? Just think about, have you put yourself on a pedestal? Do you think that you are doing the most work, that you're doing the best job in your family, and Other people are just kind of, you're picking up their slack or are you really exposing your heart when you open your mouth? And then also, you know, there's a lot of people out there who have distanced themselves, have made the choice to distance themselves from their family. And now with it being a regulation, do you miss your family? Now with somebody else saying, no, you have to stay away. Like now are you, is there something stirring in you that wants to fight against that? Like, no, I... You can't tell me to stay with my own. I can say that. Mm-hmm. Like, And where is that coming from? Mm-hmm. So is God stirring something in you to reconcile with your family mm-hmm. in this season, even though you can't be with them now, mm-hmm. now that, that it's been regulated? Mm-hmm. And, you know, just to add to that, provide any clarity to previous expectations that you may have held towards those family members. Mm-hmm. Just because we're supposed to be social distancing and setting the table for a surprise guest that's not mm, you don't want that guest keep Mm-mm. them at a distance <laughs> strife Mm-mm. does not have a place at your table so while you focus on keeping people out of your house make sure you're not inviting somebody else in at the same time there you go there you go boom we just want to lift up everything tonight and say a, a word of prayer and just pray that this conversation of vulnerability right. falls on the right ears. It speaks to you. Someone who needs to hear it, who feels like, I don't know why I didn't get into this family. Why was I born into this family? Mm-hmm. It's like, not all families are perfect. No, no family, family is, is perfect. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just you know, want to thank you guys for taking your time to listen to us. Just be honest and be open and... We want to pray for you. We want to pray for ourselves as we finish out these, Mm -hmm. hopefully, last few weeks of quarantine. And we just want to give it all to the Lord. Give this podcast to Him and um, just pray that He uh, takes it and blesses someone with it. And our stories and our events and honesty doesn't even compare to the truth of Jesus' love and the reality of His 
unconditional forgiveness and relentless love toward us. And so we want to give that to you. And we're close because we rely on that truth. Amen. So let's just take a moment and and thank the Lord for giving us this opportunity. (laughs) Father God, we thank you for this Path and Posture podcast. We thank you for the opportunity to be open, be honest about what it's like to walk in your word and to fail and to be redeemed by Jesus and the forgiveness of Jesus being shown by the people who love us, who are around us. And we just thank you for our listeners. We praise you for your word, for your truth, that you are the author of truth. Lord, there's so much wisdom in your word. In Proverbs 13, you tell us that where there is strife, there is pride. And Lord, that's so evident. And I'm sure all of us, many of us are becoming aware of that right now, being in close proximity with people we may take for granted, people we love the most, people that are our family. And so Lord, we ask for a spirit of grace for the fruits of the spirit to abound love joy peace and patience in our lives and and in our family life right now and i pray that we'd start something that we would start to walk in faith start to walk in the fruits of the spirit in this quarantine time and start a trend for our future i pray that this would be a turning point in our lives and that we would see this as a turning point and see it as a time where you made something grow in us Mm -hmm. when we were felt stagnant, when we felt dead, when we felt like we were on pause, we weren't moving, but you were on the move. And so Lord, we just want to invite you to do a work in us. And Father, we thank you for your word in James that you put it so clearly that if we think we're on a pedestal, if we think that we've become a role model in all things religious, but then we open our mouth and we can't control it, think again. God, you tell us what true religion is. It's from God, it's from the Father, it's about caring for the orphans, for the widows, for those who are suffering. And so Lord, I pray that we would focus on that instead of our own self-righteousness around our family members and see ways that we can improve ourselves for your kingdom, for your glory. And in this time, see ways that we can reach out and love our community because everyone's hurting right now. And so Lord, help us to have an outward focus. It's so easy to have a pity party when we're stuck But Lord, I pray that you would help us to turn our gaze outside our home and to think of the ways that we can be a blessing and to be be Jesus to people around us. And we just lift this all up in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 In the times that we feel like we are trapped inside, you are making breakthroughs through us. Yes. (laughs) And here is a bit of a throwback. So to what, 2007 we wrote this? April? To celebrate the last podcast in April. In April. This song is about moving forward in trusting God with the seasons of change. April is known for rainy days and showers. And what comes after are the quote unquote May flowers and the things that God's promised us. And and so trusting that he, he is good in the midst of the storms. And so I think it's, it's good for COVID-19 quarantine and the season itself of April, you know, Greg Abbott just announced that the schools are going to be closed for the remainder of the school year. And so there's a lot of teachers that I know and friends that I know that are, that are heartbroken in this season, especially the seniors that are looking forward toward the change of moving on and graduating now that's going to look totally different so this song goes out to all of those embracing the change right now Changing 
yesterday slips behind the bed. It's hard to say goodbye and lingers long past morning. I felt this way so many times before. I've heard them say, with every shower comes a flower. But where are they when April comes again? On my own, I feel alone, I find you in solitude. Clear the skies, dry my eyes, the reasons now are tawny. Hold my heart, set it high, it's for you I'm longing. I'll miss the way the simple things they held such meaning. I long for May and sunny days again. I couldn't stay the sands of time, they're always shifting. I walk away to find you once again. On my own, I feel alone. I find you in solitude. Oh, clear the skies, dry my eyes. The reasons now are dawning. Hold my heart set it apart. It's for you I'm longing. Tell me more what's in store That it's worth the waiting I'm waiting Lord, I'm waiting I'm waiting Lord, I'm waiting days pouring down a constant streaming April's ways tend to wash away